Y'all been doing pretty good. I got some of the results in. Now, some of you haven't taken the quiz. You can still, I think it's still out there online. Um, but uh, this week we want to talk about follow your heart. And uh, how many of you have ever told someone that, follow your heart? Thank you. Be honest, right? How many have ever been told that, follow your heart? Okay. All right. All right. So, so we, what we really need to find out today, because I told you all the questions weren't false, so we need to find out today uh, if this one is true or false. So let, let's just see it today. Uh, just vote today. I already got what you voted last time. But just vote today. How many of you say that that's true? You should follow your heart. Okay. How many of you say it's false? Now, see, that ain't what you put on the test. <laughs> I got the test results, and it was 47% said that it was false, and 53% said it was true. So it's neck and neck. It's one of the closest ones that we've had. And so I see y'all gave me the church answer, which you thought was right, but that's not what you really put down on paper. See, that's why the teacher gives you an exam first and then asks you what you really put down. All right, so that's what you really put down. But you know, this time of year, we find that that phrase is being used a lot, especially around graduations and things of that nature, right? We, we hear it at commencement speeches, you know, people come out and tell us very profound things. I want you to look at this quote here, and, uh, and I want you to take a look at it. It says, this, is, this was given at a commencement speech, and it says, your time is limited. Listen to this now. Uh, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Uh, don't be trapped by dogma, all right, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. It says, don't let the noise of others' opinions, listen to this now, drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart. Does anyone know who said that? It's in 2005. Nobody. Steve Jobs. Yeah. The founder of uh, Apple. Yeah. That was, he gave, I believe that was at Stanford, I believe it was. You can look it up. Uh, but notice now, and most important, most important, have the courage to follow your heart. Hmm. As beautiful as that sounds, it's just as unbiblical and some of the worst advice you can give anybody. Amen? And we say it here in the church, follow your heart. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so let's take a look at this today. We want to look at... Uh, Jeremiah, and if you've got your Bibles, open your paperbacks, open it up to the book of Jeremiah. And for those of you who have our, have our app or don't, I, again, I, this is a great time to use it to download um, it. And we're going to go to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Jeremiah. So, yeah, you would just tap on the app. And um, then down in the bottom right-hand corner, once it comes up, you hit worship. And then you would hit sermon notes. And then you would just tap on today's date, and there you would have it, Jeremiah 17. And uh, we're going to just look at two verses. Uh, I'll talk about the whole book and, and some other passages, uh, but we're going to focus on these two verses here. And I'll come uh, from the NIV. Uh, and the other good thing about the app, you can different translations and all those great things that you can do there. Uh, Jeremiah the 17th chapter, and we're going to look at verses 9 and 10. Hear the word of the Lord. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Uh, follow your heart, follow your heart. Uh, the writer of this is by the name of the book, Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, lived and did his uh, preaching and teaching during the last 40 years before the, uh, the nation of 
Islam, or not Islam, Israel, uh, went into Babylonian captivity. Uh, God had sent prophet after prophet, messenger after messenger to tell them to follow him. But they had gotten caught up in the world. Uh, they were doing everything the world was doing. They were behaving like the world and time and time again. In fact, uh, Jeremiah faced more false prophets than any of the other prophets at any other time in history. And because he was a lone voice, because he was a single voice in, in a culture that had much noise, uh, people didn't take him seriously. And because of that, he's known as the weeping prophet because he knew uh, what God was saying was coming. God was telling him that judgment is coming. And, and he was telling him over and over and over again, please listen. Uh, and when he would even get thrown in prison and get locked up uh, for telling the truth. And, and here he is now in the 17th chapter. Uh, he says here, the heart is deceitful above all things. Now, let's just talk about the heart. When we say follow the heart, let's just break that phrase down a little bit. When you tell someone to follow the heart, you're actually telling them that they're going to let something or someone be their guide. The, the something is going to be their GPS. How many of you got GPS in your car? Yeah, on your phone. Yeah, you got it somewhere, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you can pull it up, put an address in, and it can tell you where to go. And, and we like getting directions, right? Anybody like just going, going wrong? Yeah, back in the day now, my daddy didn't get lost. He just took the long way. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, you didn't have a GPS. In fact, I was his GPS. You know, I had to have... He had yeah. Anybody here know how to read a map? Oh, yeah, look at folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A paper map, you know, you pull that out there, and you know, you had to tell them where the roads are. And yeah, you had to tell them in time now, because, you know, it wasn't no beep, beep, beep. Yeah, that's your turn. You say, where? Back there. <laughs> how long ago? Ten minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 how, so when you tell someone to follow, you're actually saying this is going to be your guide. You're saying that your heart is your GPS, it is, is that it's going to be your guide. And the reason most of us feel that way is because we believe inherently that we are good people, that we want to do the right thing, that, that there, very few of us really just want to do the wrong thing. And because of that, we feel that our heart would not lead, mislead us or misguide us. And, and so a lot of times feeling for someone say you know I had this feeling in my gut you know well that wasn't that wasn't your heart that was indigestion <laughs> you know but but you, you you want to follow your feelings and, and and so 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 when when he says here uh, that your heart is deceitful over a few things above all things. Now, now again, let's look at this word heart because with the, the word heart in the Bible is in both the Old and the New Testament are used oh, about over a thousand times. And, and it, most of the time, it's not talking about the physical organ that pumps blood uh, through your body. It's talking about uh, where you have your, uh, your feelings and your emotions and your desires. And the majority of the times when it talks about our heart, it talks about it in a negative connotation. And so here it says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Above all things. Your heart. Your heart. Now, 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 let me just ask you a question. Let me just ask you a question just to see if we can get a picture here. If I told you I had someone I wanted you to follow, and if I told you that they were sexually immoral, uh, if I told you that they were uh, arrogant, if I told you that they were greedy, if I told you that they, they were envious, even if I told you that, that they were a thief, or I told you that they were a murderer, or I told you that uh, they uh, were foolish, uh, how many of you would follow that person? Well, that's what you're going to vote for most. Oh, no, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all wouldn't follow that person. You sure you wouldn't? 
Well, look at Mark. Let's take a look at Mark, the seventh chapter. And if you got the app there, you should have that. Now, this is Jesus speaking. So this is Jesus speaking. Mark, the seventh chapter, verse 20 through 23. Look, look what it says. He, this means Jesus. Jesus went on. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, what else? Uh, adultery, greed, uh, malice, deceit, uh, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils comes from inside and defile a person. So now you just told me you wouldn't follow that person. You know what y'all just told me? Well, who is that person? Who is it? Thank you. Somebody, no, you don't want to point to yourself. You're going, <laughs> yeah, this is the Bible. All right. And, and so how many of us have followed a heart? Don't raise your hand. Don't, 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 don't put your hands up now. Don't put your, yeah, we don't want that on film. Deceitful above all things. Your heart. Your heart. Too many of our decisions are made based on our feelings, our emotions, and our desires. Too many of them. And the text says, your heart is deceitful. It will mislead you. It will mislead you. You're making big decisions. I'm going to follow my heart. This is how I feel about it. I got a gut feeling about this one. I feel it in my good. I, I, I just know this is right. This is the right thing to do. Mm. Yeah. We operate on our feelings and our emotion and our desires. Now, the question is, how bad off is our heart that's so deceitful? I, I wish it was just a little sick. But the text goes on the next and says, and it's beyond cure. It means that it's, no, it's not going to get better. Can, can I just talk plain? I know we've, we've, we cringe when we see the stuff we see on TV, uh, like what happened in Buffalo. That is evil in its highest form. But I've got bad news. I'm like Jeremiah. It's not going to get any better. And I know we, we get all, all worked up and we, they got to do something. And, and, and you get all of these government officials who come forth to the stand. We're going to prosecute to the highest of the law. How many needles can you give a guy? You know? And, 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 and doing that... How many folks is it going to bring back? Now, I'm not saying punishment is not deserved, because it is. But the problem is not the guns. I'm sorry. It's not the guns. The text says it's the heart. It says murder comes out of the heart. Before he pulled the trigger, he thought it in his head and in his heart. The folks were dead before they ever, he ever stepped foot on the grounds. The world is not going to get better and government is not going to fix it. I know we don't want to hear that. I, I, I know we want more laws, you know, to, to, that they got to do something. Yeah, they got to do something, but what they're going to do isn't going to be what's going to fix it. All right? Plain and simple. The text tells us where all of our problems come from. Now, it goes on to tell us who can understand it. 
Who can understand how, about how, where our feelings come from, how emotion comes from, our desires? Who, who, who can get to the root of that? Well, let me just tell you, there's not a psychologist, there's not any technology, there's not any science, there's not any medical reports, there's not any of those techniques or, or uh, programs or any psychological analysis that can understand it. None. None, none can understand it. No one really can understand what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and what your desires are. Because they're internal. We don't know what you're thinking until it comes out. When we see your actions and your deeds and your conduct. We don't like to think like that. So let me just give you your first, your first real truth here. Here's, here's the problem. At the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. At the heart of our problems is the problem of our heart. That's it, just like I just said earlier. They, they can come up with as many laws as they want. They can come up with as many programs as they want. They can throw as much money at it as they want to. But until they get to the root of the problem, at the heart of the problem is the problem of our hearts. We don't like to look at ourselves like that because we like to think that basically everybody's got some good in them. Jesus says, none are good, not one. You know, folks will say, well, Pastor, why do, good, why do bad things happen to good people? I said, well, you seen some good people? Now, I'm not saying bad things don't happen, <laughs> but none of us are good. Hmm. 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 Who can understand it? Look what the text says. I, the Lord, right there. Now that I means emphatically, he's actually saying there is no one else. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. That word, that word search there means to deliberately investigate, to spy it out. It's the same word that they use in, in, in the uh, book of Joshua when he told him to go spy out the land. Go see what's there. Come back with some evidence that, I, that we know that the land is flowing with milk and honey. God is the one who can spy you out, who, who knows what's going on about your feelings, your emotions, and your desires. He's the one that is is, is able to do that. I can't do it. The government can't do it. The science can't do it. A psychologist can't do it. Psychiatrists can't do it. I, I don't care what kind of equipment we got. I don't care what kind of education we have. I don't care all the stuff that we know. God is saying, I am the only one. The only one. The only one that searches your heart. Now, he could have stopped there, but he says, and, he says, in addition to my spying you out, in addition to my looking at your feelings and your emotions and your desires, he says, guess what? Then I examine. This means put it to the test. Put it to the test. How many of you ever said, the Lord knows my heart? Come on. Don't, don't lie to me. Now, raise your hand high. You wave it in the air like you just don't care. You know, when you messed up and, and, you, and you really meant to do right and you just got caught, you say, well, the Lord knows my heart. He, he, he really knows my heart. He does. The problem is you don't know your heart. That's the problem. See, 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 see. Yeah, he knows it. That's what it says right there. But it says, who can understand it? We can't. We, we, you can't even understand. We don't even know ourselves. We 
lie to ourselves. I had to tell you this story. My, 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 my father, who God rest his soul, uh, had a young man that used to ride with him uh, or would, would actually drive him place to place. And, and, and he would take my daddy. Uh, pl- he, my daddy would pick him up and he'd drive to church, and he would then drive my dad everywhere. And then on their way home, he always knew my dad was going to stop to eat, so he got a meal in him. And, 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 so, now, and he wasn't no little guy. He was all big guy, right? And, and so one day, we were with him. One day, we were with him, and uh, there's another guy that was big, too. And, and the young man had the nerve to say, man, he's bigger than me. My dad, in his quiet voice, you deceive yourself. <laughs> We can really be looking at things and we can look at it so twisted uh, because we see what we want to see, when we want to see it, how we want to see it. We make it look like we want it to look. We make it to feel like we want it to feel. We make it to be like we want it to be. We deceive ourselves. He says, who? He says he examines He puts it to the test. That means he looks at your reasoning, your understanding, and your decisions. He then compares them to your feelings, your emotions, and your desires. He looks at all of that, and he says that it is deceitful. This is God talking. In most Bibles, he will have these words in parentheses. He says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. Funny, this is just a little sidebar. That word mind in the Hebrew actually means kidney. And that's just where they start the seat of of, of your reasoning and your understanding and and, and your decision-making came from. And he's saying here now uh, that God is the only one that really knows us. So let me give you your your second uh, uh, real truth here. Let me give it to you. Only God fully knows and understands us. Only God. Only God. I might say for myself and Sister Redwood, she knows me. I just (laughs) get she fully. (laughs) Glad I drove today. I'm glad I drove. (laughs) Hmm. Why is that so important? Uh, Look! Look at! Look at! uh, I think it's Proverbs 15.3, I think it's the, the passage. I want you to just have a, as an underscore here. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Nothing escapes God's eye. See, this is where I get my peace. When I see crazy stuff like that happening on TV and you got news reporters all coming in and they're zooming in from everywhere and they say, did anybody see this coming? I go, yes. God did. It did not catch him off guard. And because it did not, I can have some peace in knowing that God is in control. As bad as it is, and what does, what, when you look at the news, what it should really just exhibit to you is how much we need to get out and share the good news. That's what the news is for, not for you to get all emotionally drained from watching it. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. The same story over and over. You change to another channel. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. You go to bed all drained and all whacked out. Just know. That you got a God who sits high and who looks low and who sees all things that are going on from the beginning to the end. And and although I may not be able to understand why you do what you do and why you behave like you behave, I got a God who searches and examines your heart and your mind and he knows your inner work and he knows why you're doing it. He knows your motives. He he knows your intentions. He knows your schemes. Mm. 
Mm. So why, why is that good that we have a God like that? Look at the last part of this verse. He says to reward. Listen to this now. Each person. You can put your name right there. I put my name. Anybody here not a person? Everybody here people? Raise your hand if you're a people. One person just did like this. Not sure yet. Mm. (laughs) Listen now. This God who examines and searches. Two, it's a purpose behind it. See, this is, this, this, this is good news right here. This ought to be real good news right here. He says to reward, that means to pay, to give, to, to grant uh, to each person according to their conduct, your behavior. Yeah, to your behavior. Yes, how you act. <laughs> and look, according to what your deeds the stuff you've done, deserve. Yeah, some folks, you think folks are getting away with some stuff? I, let them go. Payday's coming. Folks say, what you talking about? I said, don't worry about it. payday's coming. Just tell folks the next time they do you wrong, payday's coming. <laughs> Watch this stuff. What? Payday's coming. That's what the text is saying. That there's a God who's going to reward everyone according to their conduct and according to what your deeds deserve. (laughs) Let me help you out here. Go to the Galatians. uh, Another passage here I think that just sort of spells this out. uh, Chapter 6, verses uh, 7 and 8. Now, if you got the app, it should be right there in the app for you when under sermon notes. This is why I tell you to to pull that down. But Galatians 6, uh, verses 7 and 8. Sometimes you, you just need to have this because you need this when you're going through some things. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Uh, a man or a woman or a boy or a girl, that word there doesn't mean just a male. It means humanity reaps what he sows. Look at what it says. Whoever, put your name right there. Whoever sows to please their flesh. Let me just pause right here. See, a lot of stuff we see in our culture right now, we're pleasing our flesh. We, you know, yeah, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go all the way there. I'm going to go all the way there. We let our children, we we let folks, well, that's what makes them happy. You know, if it pleases them, it's okay. I, I got a few, mm-mm, but most, most in the culture. Look at TV. Look, look at all the crazy stuff. Look, 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 look what it's. Everything's about pleasing the flesh. Sexual orientation, uh, uh, money, uh, greed, uh, facial, uh, how you look with your body. It's so much emphasis is placed on this exterior that we're going to put in the ground. People getting all kind of enhancements to bury. I'm just saying. No, baby, we ain't putting that in the ground. Uh Uh-uh, we're going to see, can we transplant this? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, but, But we spend so much time pleasing the flesh. It says, and from the flesh, you will reap destruction. That's payday. You're going to get paid. So, so, so don't just let these kids think it's okay to just do all the stuff because everybody else is doing it. No, they will reap what you sow to the flesh. Then it says, whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. That's what God is saying in Jeremiah 17, 10. He's saying it right here in Galatians 6, uh, 7 and 8. And he's saying it all throughout the Bible. There is a day coming. There is payday is coming. And for those of us 
uh, who know Jesus the Christ, uh, we escape payday and we get a free day. Uh, we get a pass on that day. And because it says we will have eternal life. Uh, that, that ought to be good news because now, now, now let me just slow down. Everybody gets eternal life. The question is where? Where are you going to spend it? Yeah. Yeah. And we're leading people because we don't want to offend anybody. We can love everybody. But when you, if you don't tell someone the truth in love, that's hypocrisy. Now, there's a way to tell it and when to tell it. That's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. Don't run out here and start slandering folks. We're going to be talking about that on Four Brothers next week. <laughs> the Bible said, bam, bam, bam. Take the book, bam, 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 bam. Pastor, guess what I did? I told him the truth in the name of Jesus. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. what it says to pay reward a deceitful heart is a dying heart a deceitful heart is a dying heart let me give you your last uh, real truth here you will receive full compensation for your lifestyle Full compensation. Full. That's scary. There is a day coming. Payday. Full compensation for your lifestyle. Hmm. So, what does Jeremiah tell us about following our heart here? Let me give you three takeaways. Here's the first one. Your heart is beyond repair, but is not beyond replacement. It is beyond repair, but not beyond replacement. Second thing, you may be a mystery to yourself and others, <laughs> but not to God. Some of us, come on, just, just be, you don't know yourself. You deceive yourself. Thank you, Daddy. Here's the third one. Following your heart is not only foolish, it's deadly. It's deadly. So, what can I tell you here? If I were to give you a bottom line, I would say, follow Jesus, not your heart. Why? Because Jesus lived the life that I could not live. Jesus died a death I could not die. Jesus got up from a grave I could not get up from. Jesus made me a home in a place that I could not make a home. And because of him, if I follow Jesus and, and not my heart, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, for in my Father's house uh, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Oh, that's good news. But you only get it if you don't follow your heart. You follow Jesus. We have to make the decision who we're going to follow. So I want to challenge you this week. 
I want you to search who or what you're really following and then count the cost. Count the cost. Because if you're not following Jesus, don't get this wrong, but get it right. You got hell to pay.